Welcome back savages to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can reduce the power consumption of threefold nodes. So as you might know from some of my other videos I've been involved in threefold for quite some time. So what you're seeing right now is a couple of my threefold nodes and they're all in one farm. So we've got the big one here which I call the beast. This is a high spec PC and then you've got two mini PCs at the top there. Now they're all in one farm and combined they use 100 watts of power 24 7. So with energy costs increasingly going up what threefold have done is come up with a solution whereby if you've got a farm of multiple nodes such as this they've been able to make it where you'll still receive full rewards if one of your farm nodes is up while the others are actually in sleep mode. And what the farmer bot will do is basically control which of these PCs is on at any given time and which ones are off. And it's going to be running on a very small power efficient Raspberry Pi 4 which I've managed to free up from one of my other projects and it's very important that that's on the same LAN network as these nodes as well so if you've got these on Ethernet on a switch like I do at the moment connecting all these nodes then make sure that your Raspberry Pi or whatever unit you're going to use is connected to that same slot as well it needs to be on the same LAN to be able to wake up these devices and then the next thing we're going to do after that is set up our PCs right here so they do actually wake up on LAN and then finally I'm going to go through a full tutorial provided by Threefold on how to set up the farm bot to control these units. So without further ado let's go. So here we are in the BIOS of the Beast PC. This one's got an ASUS motherboard in there so this is the BIOS that you're going to get. It's called the UFI BIOS Utility and you can get into this by pressing the delete key when the PC boots up. Once you've gone into there go into the advanced menu right here and you want to be into this sub menu called APM configuration. So once you're in the APM configuration sub menu, scroll down to the setting which is power on by PCIe. By default it's disabled, so we're going to change that to enabled. And then once that's done, hit F10. That should save it and then press enter. And that's it you're done. So that's all you need to do on any PC which has got an ASUS motherboard. Now onto the mini PCs. So next up is the mini PC and just boot that up and go into the BIOS. You need to go into the power tab at the top right there. Scroll down to automatic power on, do that. And then where it says wake on LAN, change that from automatic or wherever it's on to primary. Once you've done that, press F10 and then do save and reset and that's it, you're done. So that's step one complete. We've now got wake up on LAN enabled on all our nodes. Next thing we need to do is set up the farmer bot, so let's go. So this is what we're going to be using for our farmer bot. It's a Raspberry Pi 4. I just had a spare one kicking about and it makes sense because whatever farmer bot you use, it's going to be need to be running 24 seven. So with the Raspberry Pi 4, it's very low powered and it makes sense for me to use it. And also if I need to use any other crypto projects uh, on here, I can also install them alongside the farmer bot as well. So it's all good. So it does need to be on the same LAN as your threefold nodes, so just bear that in mind. You can set up other things like VMs and stuff, it's entirely up to you. But for me, the Raspberry Pi 4 makes perfect sense. So without further ado, let's go and set this bad boy up as the farmer bot. So this is the second part of the video where we're going to be installing the software on your Pi 4. First thing you need to do is download the Raspberry Pi imager onto your PC. Once you've done that, make sure you've attached the micro SD card from your Pi to the PC. So you can pick it up in storage at this point here. But first of all, we need to pick the operating system. Now I've done this install about two or three times and sometimes it just wouldn't work. So the only operating system I could actually get this to work with was to go to here, go to Raspberry Pi OS, go down the list and I basically picked this one here, which is a port of Debian Bullseye and no desktop environment so that one right there and it's a 64-bit version so once I pick that I don't actually write it to the card just yet I go into settings I set the host name in here I enabled SSH I went down here and I set the username and password so I can remotely log into it using uh, software like putty and then I just Tick that box there to set the locale settings as well. You do save to that. And then you can write it to the SD card. That'll take a few minutes while it's writing the image to the SD card. 
Once it's got to 100%, you'll get a message saying it's all complete. And at which point you can then take the SD card out and put it back into the Raspberry Pi. So the next thing you need to do is log into the Raspberry Pi through a program such as Putty, which is what I've done here. Enter your login credentials. And then on this screen, just type sudo su. That'll take you to root. First thing you need to do is do a sudo apt update like that. And that'll download all the files that you need to make sure that the OS is updated and everything. And then once you've done that, do a sudo apt upgrade. If I can spell it correctly, upgrade. So once you've applied the apt update and the apt upgrade, make sure you do a sudo reboot. And that'll just apply any changes that need to be done before you're going to do the next steps. So once the Pi is rebooted, log back in, do a sudo su, and then you're on to the next bit where you're going to be installing the Docker software. Uh, and this is a command you write to get the Docker software. Once it's finished downloading the software, run this command, sudo shdocker.sh, and that'll install the Docker software. You can then run this command line, uh, which is systemctl status docker. And this should just tell you two things that you need to know if it's working correctly. One is it's saying in green active and running. And the second bit is should say enable there. And it is for me. So that looks like Docker's installed correctly. So the next thing we need is the Docker compose gamel file. And you do that by doing a get wget and this command line here. Next thing we're going to do is create a directory called mainnet. So you can just type in mkdir mainnet. And what we're going to do here is move the gamel file into that directory. So you can just do mv docker slash compose dot gamel to mainnet. So once you've done that, you can go into mainnet. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty that gamel file. So you can just do an front arrow and do docker compose dot gamel and that'll clear it out completely. Then what we want to do after you've cleared it out is do a nano docker dot gamel Now this will be empty initially, there won't be anything in it, but you need to get this particular script. So on the um, Farmerbot Raspberry Pi page, uh, there's a script in here which has had two lines changed by Scott. And what you need to do is just copy all of this, top to bottom, and paste it into this file here, so it's all there. Then do a control O to write it out and then a control X to quit. So the next thing we need to do is create a .env file. So you can just do nano .env. And again, this will be empty. So the bit of code we need to enter into that file is this one right here. And you can get this from the GitHub Farmerbot page. So just grab that and basically paste it into there. So for the mnemonic, this is going to be the 12 or 24 word secret phrase that you use when you set up the main twin that controls that farm. So enter the words into there. So now that the farm robot is live on the network, you need to change network to main. So for the relay part, it should read like that. And same for the substrate. If there's anything in between here, make sure it reads just like that. Once that's done, control O to save it, control X to quit out of this. So that's your env file done as well. So once we're in the config folder, we need to create a file called config.md. So again, this will be empty. So the text that goes in there, you'll have to grab from the Farmerbot basic guide. And I'll leave a link again in the description to this. But you need to copy all of this out here as an example configuration file. Grab that and paste it into here. So I've got a couple of nodes that I need to change. So I've already kind of done this in here. So for each node that you're going to be using in your farm for the uh, farmer bot, you need to enter the node ID that goes in the top bit for the ID. And in the second line where it says twin ID, you need the twin ID. 
and you can get these from the TF Explorer page. So just look up your node and you'll get both these details from that. So just repeat this for the number of nodes that you want to include in the farmer bot. Then you're going to get to the next bit, which is the farmer configuration. You need to enter the farm ID in there. If you've got any public IPs, enter them in there. I haven't got any, so I've just entered zero. And then in power config, this is an optional thing you can set. I've just got a periodic wake up at that time. And then you can change wake up thresholds as well if you need to do that as well. Once you've done that, again, control O to save it, control X to quit. So that's all our files created. So the next thing you do before you actually run the software is apparently you're going to need some TFT in your account to be able to run this. So what you need to do is go into the dashboard of your uh, threefold chain and then make sure you've got more than one TFT in your account right there. And there's a couple of ways you can send money to this twin and the account that you're sending it to is going to be again the twin that is the original controller of your farm. So you need to put some TFT into that. So the way I transfer the money into this account was quite simple. I went to bridge on the left hand side. I went to deposit and then in the deposit, you're going to get like a QR code here on the right hand side. Using the phone, you can do send transaction, send about five to 10 TFT, scan that QR code, and then it should basically just send that balance into there. The chain you're going to be using is the Stellar chain. So what I'm told is once you've deposited enough TFT into here, say like five or 10 TFT, that should be enough for a couple of years, apparently from what I'm told. So if you get a bit in there, it shouldn't be something you need to top up on a regular basis. So we've got the TFT all loaded up in that wallet. So here we are in the moment of truth. Let's see if this works. So to get everything started, what you need to do is issue the command docker compose up. So after a while, it'll all start spinning up and it should recognize your local network and pick up the uh, nodes that you entered in the config. And what it should do is start turning them off and leaving one on. So here we are about 15, 20 minutes later. And would you believe it looks like it's all working? So just at the back there, we've got the Raspberry Pi doing its thing, running the farmer bot. But if you look on the front, the mini PC, the second one there, that's still switched on. So that's the one it's decided to leave on for today. The one at the top is switched off and the beast, as I call it, there's no LEDs on that. So that's switched off as well. So I've actually got a power monitor running in the background as well. And originally when I had all three on, it was running at 100 watts. And right now when I've just double checked it, it's running at 25 watts. So that is absolutely fantastic. So I'm saving three quarters of the electricity that I was using before when all three nodes were up and running. So I just want to say well done threefold. Excellent concept, works great. I'll see how it goes over the next few days. So it's actually taken a while to get to this point. I did have a number of failed attempts at getting this working, but the people over at Threefold on the Discord and the Telegram have been absolutely brilliant. Big shout out to Scott and a couple of the other people on the, uh, the forums for giving me some ideas and getting through this. But it looks like it's working. It's saving me electricity. And hopefully they'll have a monitoring tool up soon so we can at least double check to make sure that these units are still earning even when they're in sleep mode like this. So anyway, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I would definitely recommend going on the Discord and Telegram groups for threefold. Excellent bunch of people that will help you out anytime. I've got this all up and running. It's saving electric at the same time. What more can you ask for? The only piece of the jigsaw missing really now is a monitoring tool so we can check to see everything's working as it is even when they're in sleep mode. But I think that's in the pipeline, so that's all good. But anyway, I hope you like this video. Please subscribe, like, and I'll see you savages on the next one.